Okay. Good morning. My name is Suarez and I'm an Aboriginal from South Africa. We are the Aboriginals that was declared coloured with Act 30 of 1950. And how this came about was when the English decolonized South Africa, before we get there, we must understand the history of South Africa. It is not complex like, it meant, like it's made, made out to be. It is purposely made complex to constructively still deep dispossess the Aboriginal people of the land and land and resource rights. And um, when the first settlers came to Libya, Jan van Riebeck in 1652, it was not the first time that settlers come here, but it's the first time that they stayed. Because since the 1400s, the people have been trading and there was no problems because they left. Now, because the, since the people stayed, they, they, they started constructively, when Jan van Riebeck came here, he found the Hottentots, what they call the Hottentots. And after almost a hundred years, they, they, they decided we're going to have to kill these people out. And they actually made a law called the Hottentot Proclamation, where they issued, 1939 was the last, where they issued a permit um, to hunt the Hottentot. The last permit was issued in 1939 for a male and female couple. And um, um, people like me would have been hunted for speaking up right now. So what's happening is, the English in the meantime also came, but the company that came and colonized here in the beginning was the VOC, was a company, a business, who later became the government. Nothing has changed today. What does that stand for, VOC? Um, the Dutch East Indian Company. Okay, okay. They, the VOC is just Afrikaans acronym for, you know, uh, 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 big, uh, for the Dutch East Trading Indian Company. Now, they were primarily Dutch, and because they were a company who became the governors, and that has not changed today. So when the English came here, they fought this little war for the resources, but eventually the English de uh, decolonized. Sorry, are we talking about the Anglo-Boer War, 1899 or something? Um, from there was the start, but the English decolonized from 1943 to 1951. Mm -hmm. And um, with the decolonization, the English had a treaty. And because they understood what the Afrikaners wanted to do, because the Afrikaners, in effect, is Dutch descendants who came here without land and made up a nation called Afrikaner to vote and give themselves voting rights in South Africa and take over the land. When the English decolonized, they understood this and they put the land in trust in what they call the Colored Persons Communal Reserved Act, uh, uh, Trust Land Act, Act 3 of 1961. And together with that, they also had the preservation um, of the Colored Persons Communal Reserve Trust Land. But um, the Afrikaners, and for, because it was put, and they put that trust with the masters of the High Court, they would not put it with a political party, and they would not put it with a, uh, with any government because they understood what it was about. So they put it with the masters of the High Court where it still is today. And um, because the English understood what the Afrikaners were to do since 1930, they started reclassifying the people from the Hottentot proclamation to Khaled. And because they hunted the Hottentots, the people obviously self-determined they are Khaled out of fear for being shot. Mm -hmm. So. For that reason, they started the Coloured, uh, the Group Areas Act, the Tricameral Parliament, and all that type of thing, to, um, with the intention, if they move all the people to a coloured area, they get the rest, and they can say it's been done. But the English understood this, and they put it in with a reference, all the land, the old colony, the Cape Colony, all the crown lands, as the Coloured Persons Communal Reserves land. That was put into trust, and the English paid 200 million pounds every year, which was then put into that trust. And because it was a foreign legal system, naturally, the Aboriginal people was, as put by the Afrikaners, legally incapable, and they took over administration of the trust from the 1950s to the 1960s. And in that time, 1960 to 1965, in South Africa was recession. What they've done is they've, the land that was already taken by force for free was then funded by our trust funds in the form of trust bank, Folks Bank, all these banks South Africa opened and funded the farmers, the lease farms, only in 2000 then became automatic titles where they started kicking the Aboriginal people out. So, because we were legally incapable, they took over the administration. But by the 1980s, the English realized what was happening and they stopped giving the money. And this is when the Afrikaner Nationalist Party 
started bringing in tricaminal representation, but voting was not allowed in the coloured persons areas. So they brought in a tricameral parliament in the form of uh, Tom Swartz, um, Alan Hendricks, or Peter Murray, who's still in politics today, to then, on behalf of the people, have some form of representation, which was deemed and just unconstitutional and illegal. Up till today, the, the voting system in South Africa is not constitutional. So, if you fast forward 1989, they made Act 9 of 1989, then they tried to repeal these acts just as the English thought they would do. But they can't repeal a trust and they have given nothing back. They have since just demarcated the four provinces and because they are both um, the black African and the white African who made up the nations, because the same happened with the, with the Nguni, the black South Africans that people know as black South Africans, they are Ngunis, Ndebeles, Swazi, um, Sutu, Tonga, Venda, those are the tribe names. They made up the nation Zulu and Koza. It's well documented. The Zulu was only founded in 1706. The Koza later in 18 something. But it's a collection of small tribes that moved down from the Great Lakes, made themselves a nation in South Africa, the Black African, and they also had a party. Just like the Nationalist Party of the White African, the Black African had what they called the ANC, the African Nationalist Congress. So if you have a nationalist government, how they work is they have to centralize everything and run it on race-based laws. In the past they had apartheid and today they have a BEE, where the people come into our areas where there traditionally was no black Africans or white Africans. But the, the, the voting rights they give themselves let discriminate the Aboriginal people uh, gets discriminated against by up to 100% now with the equity policies that the government has put forward. So we've gone full circle there. They are constructively extincting us and the world is saying nothing. I worked for the Human Rights Commission until three months ago I resigned because we speak but the, our Human Rights Commission is politicized. So do you know what they deal with? They deal with um, hate speech, racial adverts, but they take nothing for the plight of the original people because the arrangement between the black African and the white African in places we are today, Yemen's Dorf, Jeffreys Bay has become safe havens. They run from all over the country and we are losing more than ever before. But it is very obvious today because when they come and dish out the land, they don't, the black African or the black government don't take the land that was already taken by the white Africaners and give it to whoever or their people or back to us. They come into our areas and they take the last little pieces out with laws and this can never be and the world must know what's happening here. Our presidents go, they lied to the UN rapporteur, that's on record. They lied, to the, they tried to pull out of the ICC twice. They couldn't because they are founder members of the Geneva Convention and for that reason we have charged them with the ICC but we have no funds. Today we cannot go to the Hague to set our case. We are media blackout, we are constructively held back financially, so we cannot get there. We are between 7 and 11 million people here that they are constructively extincting and we need help from the rest of the world. Thank you. Can I just ask you a couple of yes, questions? Please. So we have people like Julius Malema, yes. who comes to Oxford University in the UK, and if I've understood correctly, he, he says that the blacks originally had South Africa, and the whites came and dispossessed them from the, the lands. Yes. And um, whereas, on the basis of what you've been saying, from what I understand, you've been kind of dispossessed by two groups. One coming from the north, you say the Great yes. Lakes region of what, East Africa migrating? North, north East and West Africa, yes. Okay, migrating downwards yes. since... When did they first arrive, do you know? Well, I personally come from a town called Kanadendal. Yeah. And in my lifetime, there was no black Africans there. Right. But today, they have been bust in because of the white Afrikaners that has the farms. Mm. That's the type of labor they have. Then the people come, they don't go home. They get supplied with material to build shacks in our areas. And then that same people get looked after by the politicians, yeah. burn down our infrastructure then for services. Mm. So it's a recognition thing. But when you talk about Julius Malema and the narrative they're pushing, those are political narratives. Mm. They also made up a colored Afrikaan is known as a Khoisan. There is no such thing. Mm. If people look at our town, you can go to um, Ghanadendal. We've got a very well-documented museum and all there. We know who our people were. The Hesekwa, 
the Otaniqua, the Khamtabakwa. They kept our names for all the geographical areas, but no other recognitions. So they are creating a new narrative because for people to apply, the people must apply to be Khoisan at government. And to do so, they must self-determine they are black or black African in particular. Now, the black African in particular makes the white African black on paper. So mm. they're going to keep everything they've stolen previously. So that's a political narrative, and Julius Malema then is doing it for their people because um, the rational facts will lead everyone to know that th this was Horton Tot country. Okay, so there are a lot of land claims yes. where... African families are claiming that that land was originally owned by them and now white Afrikaners, I don't know what the correct terminology should be, um, are having to give up their land to black families. Now, what is it that you 11 million are actually pressing for? That you should be allowed to make claims on land that was originally yours, that you've been unfairly dispossessed of? Okay. The land claims is fraudulent and it's a state procedure. And I think everyone is familiar with a term called collateral damage. So the few families, black families that loses land is the collateral damage to keep the, 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 the world at bay because the majority that was taken, why must the black families lose land if the white families has not given back anything they've taken? Where one man sits with 10,000 hectares and you get 10,000 people sitting on one hectare. That's still very much alive in South Africa today. So when the land claims, and the land claims was also politically governed to only go as far back as 1913. So what happened before then? Then you had the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Rational fact. It was a conciliation between the black African and the white African because they also had the cut-off date before the genocide of the Hottentot proclamation and the Hottentot that was there before. And those are very provincially. And, you know, when you say ap apartheid and dispossession is not dead, it's been privatized. And it is just a lot more difficult to observe when you're in it, once you're in it. And we are in it right now. So this encroachment and the policies that came out um, uh, in Johannesburg recently with a multi-choice uprising that's having in there, same year in, in Port Elizabeth, there's a Nando's, 29 black employees, a white black African employees, white African owner with all the clients being the Aboriginal people. You understand? So that all that is politics. So what we want is we want to take over the administration of our trust because we are no longer legally incapable, which was the old colony. We will then restore our trust land boundaries with and, and we're losing, already we're losing a lot of land just by um, claiming only the colony. But we're going to have to then um, deal with the rest another time. But for now, the trust is with the masters. It is there for us to do the administration. The government at the moment, they are trying to, re to, to change the constitution. Section 25, also 24 and 26, um, protects our land and the trust. And they cite the change they want to make the constitution as section 25 is an impediment. In other words, they are saying the colored people now is an impediment to land reform, which is not because they tried everything and all the land reform acts has been judged illegal. That's why they've just been kicked out of the Goa agreement. They are silent on it. They're just telling the, the, the country that they've been to America and there's been talks. They've been kicked out of the Goa agreement. That's why they're running to BRICS and Russia to make these arrangements. You understand? Because they have to pick sides now. And it is also a thing of, if you look at the white Afrikaner that is here, they are European descent, most of them. They must bring their immigration status updated here. That's what we want, from illegal to legal. The embassies and the consulates must take care of them, and we will put out the taxes accordingly. Then we have no problem. So we're not saying people must not must leave, but we are saying... Just because you are born here doesn't change your descent and it doesn't give you ownership. And restoration and justice and those things have not come around for the Aboriginal people. And the political narratives, the academics, the universities, they need to start looking and stop uh, um, 
Also, you must think of is there motivation to stop this disposition because everything that is mined and pillaged from here still is going to the motherland, which is Europe. And this is not unique to South Africa. There's no such thing as an American. That's made up, same as an African. There's no such thing as an Australian and a New Zealander. That's made up. And it's all on Aboriginal lands. And everything from there goes to the same motherland, which is the Euro continent. And this, the world needs to start solving. Because it's not going to go away. It's going to get bigger until we don't want peace. We want restoration and justice. And for this to come, we need the academics. We need the, the churches has already started um, talking about it. The Vatican has been going around mm. apologizing to Aboriginal communities for moving their boundaries, fences, changing their education and religions. And two, three months later, which was last month, the Pope also announced that they no longer discover, uh, support the theory of discovered lands. And he regrets that because the tragedy of it, because all the foreign laws that was built on these lands were supported by the theory of discovered lands by a church and religion. So the people need to start with open eyes and wide awake, start addressing these things and the plight of the Aboriginal people where they are and the Euro nations to start taking responsibility for their descendants that is still causing havoc here. The embassy says they're open, but no one speaks a word. They entertain African leaders in uh, 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 now wherever they were uh, 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 to, to, to continue their narrative of politics is because they run the world. They do not give us as Aboriginal people a chance to communicate with each other so we can run our own affairs. And that is still what is happening today. So finally, if you could get a message to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and to the European Union, what would that message be? What do they need to do? Yes, my message to the European uh, Prime Minister and to the Kingdom there would be to Hold the current immigrants, illegal immigrants in, Af in Africa, uh, South Africa that calls themselves African leaders in the form of governments. Call them to book and let them uphold the treaty of the decolonization by the English and restore the lands to the Aboriginal people to make the world know because the history and the record sits with the English to make sure that the world knows the truth and not any longer entertain the shenanigans that goes on with African leaders coming to say the land are theirs and they do it in our faces. When an African leader talks about our land and our people, then that's what they mean because all land and all people means all people, but our land and our people means for them. So we want and we ask and we, we, our plea goes out to the international community, to the crown and to the um, the, 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 the Prime Minister in England to address these things to, 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 to hold the, the governments, especially in Africa account to the treaties and arrangements that they are bound to to, 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 um, to restore the, the, the resource rights the property rights of the Aboriginal people that is here and stop this political arrangements amongst themselves Thank you very much Thank you, Thank you.